Climate change, we have a limited amount of time to resolve it. And it concerns everyone, literally everyone. Well, what we need to do to solve the climate problem is to make the prices honest. Fossil fuels need to be priced to include their cost to society. If we miss this opportunity, that means a few more years, potentially it's going to be too late. We have one more shot at this in Paris. Our window is closing, but our window is still open. Am, am I, are we filming? We are filming. Okay, cool. So climate change rhetoric has obviously, uh, there's been a great groundswell of it in the last you know, six years since Copenhagen, we're starting to take it very seriously. You know, you could say that like we're really turning the corner and carbon pricing just comes up again and again and again as something we have to do. I think carbon pricing is one of those ones that the public just doesn't really hear about. But not, since I've been getting involved in the whole climate world, <laughs> they're kind of jumped into it all. Carbon pricing is like, everyone is talking about carbon pricing. In Bonn, in this last Bonn here in August, September, um, one of the things that became very, very clear to me is that we're trying to throw money and technology at the symptoms of climate change without actually addressing the core fundamentals, which is how do we correct our economy and scrub it of the very element that is causing climate change, which is CO2. They say that the only way we can do this is we need a price on carbon that has to happen very quickly because right now the market shows no signal to you that high carbon investments are actually not good. And what we're trying to do with carbon taxing and carbon pricing is not so much overthrow the capitalist model as to fix this unbelievable flaw at the heart of it that has allowed the prices of fossil fuels to be artificially cheap. The ideal solution would be a price on carbon that would make the emitters have to pay for the privilege of dumping their bad stuff into the air. And if they had to, that would fundamentally change the economics of the world's energy systems because it would mean that coal, the cheapest fuel, would become one of the most expensive and there would be powerful incentives to move forward with, with clean energy sources and efficiency. So you're saying that, that pricing carbon and its economic solution is the solution for the cause. For the cause of climate change, exactly. So yes, so pricing carbon is a solution to address the cause of climate change, which is the fundamental economic externalization that have allowed us to continue to just burn these fossil fuels, right, right? without any thought, without any concern or anything like that, until the problem has become so immediate that now we have to deal with it. The, the tricky thing about carbon dioxide is that you can't see it. So it's, it's different. I think if it was like, say, you have a, a factory next to a river, and the cheapest way for them to dispose of their waste is to just put it in the river, which for them that would be great because that's cheap and like profitable. The... But like, clearly people will think, no, you can't, you can't just put it in our river because that's cheap for you because that's affecting us and you're profiting yeah. from that being cheap. And it's global, it's dispersed everywhere. So the taxpayers are paying those costs, the cost of extreme weather events such as Hurricane Sandy, and the fires in the Pacific Northwest yeah. that are happening right now. People have to pay that cost in their health and the cost of health care while they're being caused by these carbon dioxide emissions from burning fossil fuels. And so if you take the external costs that they're creating that aren't in the price and you put them in the price, then they actually reflect their true cost of society and then people will start choosing cleaner like renewables or cleaner fuels and you'll get a much faster switch. One of the quickest ways to accelerate everybody's solutions to mitigate climate change is to correct the global economy so that it pushes carbon-based resources out of it, yeah. right, At a, in an incremental way, because it can do that. It can push it out in a way that allows us to have a, um, a transition to a resilient economy. There's two different versions of carbon pricing, quantity or price. Quantity is the government creates a certain amount of permits that caps the amount of emissions allowed. Companies who want to emit have to have a permit, so they have to either buy these permits from the government at an initial auction or sometimes they're given to them at the initial kind of introduction. And then they trade and buy and sell these permits between companies. Cap and trade. It's in the title. Mm -hmm. So it creates this kind of new market of trading 
which is kind of like a commodities market in that the price goes up and down depending on supplier demand. So the thing about that method is that there's a, there's a strong certainty in terms of how many emissions will be allowed, but there's a lot of uncertainty about the price. So it's hard for businesses to build that into their business model. And also it's like it creates a whole other market so then people are profiting right. off of it. So the other method is a price method where you tax the carbon-based fuel at the source, so when it comes out of the ground or is imported, you know, comes across the border, and then that makes that fuel more expensive. In that case, there's a lot of certainty about the price, but uncertainty about emissions because there's no cap on how many carbon emissions we'll still be creating. But the idea is that inevitably they'll go down because companies will inevitably want to find cheaper ways of doing it and carbon-based fuels will become more and more expensive and therefore they'll be incentivized to look for clean forms of energy. So within those two camps, there's lots of different ways of doing it. Say we've established that we're gonna set up a carbon tax and we're gonna, woo! That company will then charge more for that fuel and it'll get kind of trickled down the, up, the upage in price down to the consumer. So the question is that tax creates a revenue, right? Like there's an extra pot of money there now. The main question is where does that go? So it could go to the government and then be used to invest in, in renewables, say. Another idea is, is like the citizens' climate lobby idea of a carbon fee and dividend. The, the main pillars of the carbon fee and dividend is that it prices it at the source. source. And that 100% of the collected revenue goes back on an equal basis to the American public. So if we just had a tax and the government was collecting this money and not giving it back to the American households, then those poor and middle class families would feel a heavier burden of increased costs of goods. The dividend means that the extra cost that consumers have to pay, they'll actually get that or more back. Yes. So they'll be able to uh, afford that increase plus potentially have savings. The idea that Citizens Climate Lobby proposes is that it's a steadily rising fee. So you start out low, so it's not a shock to the system, 10 to $15 a ton. And then each year, the price that was put on the carbon dioxide emissions would go up by $10 a year. So it's steadily rising, but it's not shocking the system and companies can plan and prepare for it. From what I understand, that's one of the reasons why oil companies some oil companies are calling for a price is because if it's steadily progressing, they'll, they know, they can look down 30 years and know exactly how much it'll cost and how to like, organize their business around that. Citizens Climate Lobby has ha an initiative that has branched out called the Pathway to Paris Project. The initial intention of Pathway to Paris was two part to build civil society engagement in the UNFCCC process and to, to support comprehensive, effective, efficient, and equitable carbon pricing within the Paris Agreement. And one of the guiding principles is to address the key drivers of climate change. So what I've seen in the, uh, in the text as we've been analyzing it is that there are lots of calls for economy-wide solutions. And there are other things that indicate we're trying to address the economy, but there is nothing within the text that says we're addressing the economic drivers of climate change. We will be throwing finance at, the, at, at adaptation and mitigation, but adaptation and mitigation comes after the fact. It comes after the disease has already taken hold. So they're throwing good money into a leaky system. What we're doing is we're continuing to move forward with um, wording, phrasing, language that we can recommend to the parties and work with the parties. There are countries that are at the table that have already implemented carbon taxes or are considering carbon taxes, some that have actually implemented both carbon tax and also emissions trading, uh -huh. right? So emissions trading is, is a good system. It's one of the tools for carbon pricing, but it's very hard to implement particularly for countries who don't have the resources that developed nations do for administration, for operationalizing things like this. Whereas carbon fees and taxes are not. Yeah. They're a policy-based thing. You implement them, they start to work, right? You start to see reductions. A beautiful point in case is British Columbia. 
if we can prove a carbon tax in a handful of states, the way Canada has done it in British Columbia, then we've got a foothold uh, and we can show the American public that we don't have to be afraid of a carbon tax. It will enhance, not wreck, an economy, and it's a way to get our arms around the, the, the climate crisis. Right now in the U.S., the word tax is toxic. Uh, there's a lot of sort of quiet discussion uh, in policy circles, even among conservatives, that a carbon tax, especially a revenue-neutral carbon tax, would be the way to go. Uh, but few politicians have enough nerve to stick their heads up above the foxholes to say that because they'll get shot down. There are actually 40 countries, I can't remember all of them off the top of my head, but there are over 40 countries that have implemented some form of carbon pricing. Every country has an economy, and so every country has an opportunity to implement a carbon pricing instrument that is going to be a benefit to them. Eventually we can, what we call, harmonize those systems and link them. Climate change becomes such a huge issue inside China. I've heard about they, they set up like a carbon pricing system? Yeah, basically carbon trade projects in seven provinces. Internationally, I think carbon tax is the only thing that can succeed.